Hi, it's Jen from Shabby Fabrics, back with another Quilt As You Go June Taylor project. This time it's called the Tory Tote. I fell in love with this bag and I fell in love with the fabric collection. It's called Torrington from Marcus Brothers. So when I saw that kit, the batting kit, and I saw the collection, I said, let's marry those up. And there's the bag. And it's nice and big and fashionable. And I love kind of those warmer tones especially when it's kind of cold outside and I want to have that just warmth and glow. I love that. We're going to jump straight into this project. It's a little bit longer of a video, but it will be absolutely worth it. And you're going to be wanting to make these totes for all of the things, shopping, the gym, maybe the beach or a trip to the pool. And of course, they're always great for gift giving. So with all June Taylor projects, it of course comes with the pre-printed batting. So this is basically sew by numbers, which is so fun. This project is easily done in just a couple of hours, and I love that. You know, sometimes I get involved with quilts and they're, you know, weeks if not months, even half a year long. So sometimes I like jumping into a project that is, you know, just simple and fast. So um, one of the things that June Taylor always recommends with their batting is as tempted as you are, once you take that out of the bag to, to iron away those wrinkles, is please don't do it. They specifically ask you to not iron it in the event that this might distort or shrink the batting. So as you work with your piece of batting, it will naturally begin to kind of relax those wrinkles and smooth out. So the first thing that they ask you to do in the instructions, which of course are included with the batting, is to go ahead and cut around your shape a half inch to an inch. And then you have a separate, uh, some separate uh, batting that is for the strips um, that are for the actual handles of the bag. Those will be cut precisely on the line, but for the main bag, you'll be cutting a half inch to an inch around that as you prefer. And I think we did, went ahead and just did the half inch. You'll want to get your backing fabric. Now, of course, we have kits available of this. If you love the Torrington fabrics as much as we do, be sure to grab that kit. And of course, all of this that I'm talking about is included in your kit. But if you're just going to be buying the batting and doing your own fabrics, that's great too. Just know that once you have your backing fabric, you're going to want to use a basting spray of some kind. Be sure you're using that in a well-ventilated area. It can be very fumy. I'm sure it's not very healthy to breathe those fumes in. Um, and of course, most of those types of spray are flammable. Make sure you're keeping those away from flames, any kind of heat source, and of course, away from the little ones to keep them safe as well. So we went ahead, placed our backing right side down, and I actually put the basting spray on the batting, on the back of the batting and not this because I don't want tackiness out here, which is gonna be kind of, um, it's very sticky, it can be sticking to me. So spray the back of the batting and then lay it as smooth as you can on top of your backing. So look, let's take a look at this. Of course, we've cut all of our pieces out ahead of time per the instructions that are included with the batting kit you'll want to make sure that whatever measurements they are giving you, you're cutting those exactly to that size. So don't go over, don't go under, don't think, oh, I, I always upsize, don't do that in this case. We want you to be right on the mark with whatever that is. Now, of course, you want a nice sharp rotary cutter and a good rulers to make sure those cuts are coming out just so. Um, consequently, before I jump into that, I forgot, I wanted to mention, since there is a, uh, kind of a sticky fusible product on the back of the batting, we have the super nonstick size 80 needles. These are specifically meant for going through, just like we're talking about, that spray or fusible webbing so that they just glide through the fabric and the batting without getting gummed up. So enough about that. Looking at this here, it might be easier from the overhead camera actually if I turn it to the side. So it's just like you would expect when we did paint by numbers as kids, Piece number one just goes down first. And that's going to fit perfectly within that frame. Those measurements within the pattern fit perfectly on here. P piece number two, which is my beautiful gold. See these points out here? As I, as I literally put that fabric into that footprint, do you see how that fits so perfectly? That's the first step I always like to do with any of the June Taylor projects is make sure I cut the fabric right is by 
putting the uh, pieces down and make sure that they fit into the footprint. Now, we will have to flip this over, and isn't that cool that they have the point there on the other side, so when I flip it, I still have just a footprint, and I don't want this one to move, I'm gonna keep that one steady right there. I have a footprint to put that yellow fabric in. Now because I don't want that to move, I'm gonna put a couple pins in there, and we'll be using a quarter inch seam allowance. These projects are so fun. Every time they come out with a new one, I'm just so excited to, to sew it because, um, like I said, it just goes together so quickly. And I, I don't know about you, but I use a bag for like everything to the gym. Got a couple of those. And definitely when I go to the pool or the beach. And shopping, of course. All right, let's go to the sewing machine. And today I'm sewing on the Bernina 770 Quilters Edition. I have the 57D and the dual feed is engaged. And I'm sewing with a confetti 50 weight cotton. You could use a white or you know, a gray. You may want to go ahead and use a coordinating thread in your bobbin that would coordinate with the back here. So let's get started. And you can sew past the spot. Don't worry if you go past that. You don't need to stop right at that place with this particular part. Okay, so let's trim that. And as much as you want to go and press that, as much as I want to go press that, right? I'm a quilter. I sew a seam, I press a seam. It's natural. We'll press away with our fingers. We'll use our roll and press. This is how we will get those seams flat without using the heat that June Taylor does not want us to do. Now you'll notice how you have to kind of push that fabric up into that spot so it doesn't want to kind of relax and take a little bit of a tuck back here. So as I lay down the next piece, which is piece three, and of course you'll have a diagram inside your kit showing you where each piece lays this happens to be number three is the next one that's down here next to our gold triangle. It'll lay right here in the corner. And notice it fits right into that footprint. Now I'm gonna push this up into that spot. And if it doesn't go all the way up, don't worry, because you will be covering that with your next piece. We can also pin that right there so nothing's going to move on us. And they do say to go kind of shallow with the pinning. Um, you really only need to pin uh, through the batting layer. You don't have to necessarily go get the backing. All right, and let's go sew that. Okay, and same, you just keep progressing, following the numbers, pressing to the outside. I like to trim my threads as I go, at least on the top, and we'll get all the ones on the back kind of at the same time. Kind of smooth that out, get that up in that corner. And now the next piece, number four. Right sides together. Make sure we're fitting in our little spot there. And we'll just keep repeating.
unpin and press, finger press, and then roll. And you just keep doing the same process. Just like this, you just keep going. Five would be next. And what makes this so cool, it makes it look like this continuous kind of chevron, is that the same fabric is going in position here, and that's why that looks like that. So again, I'm gonna make sure my fabric fits my footprint. Right sides together. They fit in the saddle, pin, pin, pin. So, and you're gonna continue like this. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. And then you come back and do this side as well. Then you come in and you're just gonna do the strips. Now, one thing I wanna mention about the strips is the strips are longer than this footprint. So your strips are going to extend beyond that line. When I first did the, the one bag, I was like, why is that strip? Did I cut it wrong? It, no, I measured the batting strip and that's a certain length. And the strips they had uh, me cut for here, these kind of stripes uh, in here are strips, I should say, and these sections are longer and will extend beyond the blue line. So that's natural. When I come back, that's all gonna be down and it'll take you to the next step of making your toy tote. So everything is stitched down. This is what your piece will look like right now. I just wanna show that to you. And as I mentioned, these, some of the pieces are extending beyond that line. It's okay. This is all or, or down here beyond this line. These lines, let me move this so you can see it. See the blue, the blue solid line is your framework and notice how that blue dashed line extends. That's for you to line up with. Now in June Taylor's pattern, she mentions that you can pin some things down. I don't really think that you need to before you trim. So because when, as I lay my ruler down, it kind of naturally holds things in place and it holds all the pieces down. So I don't feel it's a need to, to pin, but that's your discretion. So just look at this line here. Let me grab my glasses. I can see this dash or this solid blue line here and the solid blue line here. That's what I'm lining up with right now. That, this, and this is what I'm looking at. And now we'll make a cut. And along the sides, now my ruler is certainly not gonna extend that far, but I can see to here and I can even kind of start going. I think I'll just do this one real quick. And I might have to move my fabric back. There's my spot, there's my spot. And then I'll move that so that I still have my blue solid line and my blue solid line, making sure that my fabric is nice and smooth. You can even kind of use your ruler to kind of smooth that over. Let's make sure I'm on my line. Yes, I am. And we'll keep going on our two other sides. that smoothing I like that that's a really cool way to use this move up this is the um, creative grids two and a half I should be explaining what I'm using here this is the coolest ruler it's a two and a half by 24 and a half inch besides being just ideal because I don't have some kind of big blocky ruler if you're, if you're um, let's say that you have a project that calls for jelly roll strips, two and a half inch strips, but you, have, you want a scrappy look and maybe you have a stash of fabric, which I bet you do, um, you can use this ruler to cut your own jelly roll strips. So this is just a perfect ruler for that specific mission. So lots of uses. Let's just double check, I got, yes. Okay, let's clean that up. Now her next step, 
actually we've got those notches to go, right? I would not recommend cutting into those notches with the rotary cutter because it's, it's harder to control where the blade stops. I'm gonna go in there with scissors and love these Karen K. Buckley. They are, boy, they are just a fantastic scissor for, that one. this one's a little bit harder to see. I might even trim a little bit of my fabric away, just a little bit to see my line. There I am. Did I just go through this batting like it's nothing? So you might have to duck under just a little bit. One, one idea, and, and a lot of the June Taylor projects do this. This is, it's not included in the instructions here, but this is an idea. A lot of her other batting, once you get the the, you got the batting, because this is, this, is, uh, this is just, I wasn't planning to say this, but now that I'm cutting off this notch, having difficulty seeing the blue lines because they're kind of covered up with those strips that I mentioned would be longer. We expected that, right? We talked about that. And some of her other batting kits, they have you put the batting, spray base it to the backing, and then right away with a contrasting thread, have you stitch along that blue solid line, maybe even just to the inside or just to the outside, so that you can cut it out from the backside. You kind of have that framework. So hopefully that makes sense to you. Again, that's just something that may be helpful to you. It was not included in the instructions of this, so we did not do it like that. Um, but that may be helpful. I'm going to make more of these bags because these are just so much fun. And I might experiment with that just to see if that makes it just a little bit easier to cut out these notches. And maybe I might even just stitch around only the notch area too. So that might be helpful. And I just cut out the notch part from the back side on future bags. And let's check and see how we did. I tried to cut really shallow. I think we did well on that. Okay, so let's clean that up. If you need a good pair of sharp scissors that go through a lot of bulk, that's a great pair you might want to consider. Okay, the next step that they have in their instructions is to go ahead and stitch around and just secure everything. So she said eighth of an inch or a quarter inch seam just all the way around and it's basically kind of just to hold everything together kind of like a sandwich. Now because we're going to be sewing the sides of the bag together with a half inch seam allowance, feel free to go ahead and use that full quarter inch seam allowance if you're most comfortable with that. Okay, we have that all basted together now. Now, I should have mentioned, if you want to do some quilting on this, this is a great time to do it. This is the time to do it. You could do whatever you want, obviously. It's your project. You could stitch in the ditch, something all over, just to your heart's content. I'm not gonna quilt that here just to kind of keep us moving. I know it's a longer video anyway. I appreciate you hanging in there with me. The next step is to bring right sides together and we'll sew down just the two sides here to here here to here using a half inch seam allowance so find that on your machine if it's not exactly a half an inch that is not a big deal that does not make or break this project in any way shape or form 
And if you're uncomfortable finding that, you can easily grab a couple pieces of the blue painter tape. This is what I do when I'm uncertain where a, like a measurement might be, and I'll quickly show you how to do that using a small ruler three layers of the blue painter tape just kind of stacked on top of each other. So I'm just going to bring my needle down until it just taps that part of my ruler. Now make sure your feet are away from the actual foot pedal so you don't, you would certainly damage or break a needle if you did this. So I'm just going to put that on down here making sure that my ruler is parallel to the other lines on the machine and hand crank this down until it hits that spot. My painter's tape, the three layers just makes a nice ridge. That's why I have so many of those layers. I'm just going to lay that down. I'll bring that up. And we're going to sew a half inch seam allowance on those two sides. So I'll just run my fabric and of course, I've got a quilting foot, so this is not ideal. In a different environment, I would take this foot off, but just for the sake of time, we'll keep going with that foot. threads I see back here. Let's trim those up. Uh, it doesn't mention it in the pattern, but I always like to press these seams open. Now, one thing you can do, you could serge those edges, you could zigzag those edges. They mention that in the pattern because, of course, those are going to be on the inside of the bag. But I would go ahead and just press that fully open. all the way down. And the next thing will be to box the corner. So that may be something new to you, but because of the way they did the batting, boy, it's really very straightforward. I'll just press the one, box the one corner, and then I'll press the other one and do the other one um, off camera. Okay, so you can see that leaves kind of the circle, right? That circle opening, you can see that. When you box a corner, I just get, I understand the opening. And see how I could have that, that seam off center? I just, I just line it up so that there's an equidistant, equidistance, I should say. And I'm just going to pin that so it doesn't move. And we'll go sew another half inch seam allowance. So this is a lot of bulk. I definitely want to take a couple stitches back. Again, that quarter inch uh, foot I have in here is not the right foot to be using. We're trying to save a little bit of time. But I think that is interfering just a little bit with the project. And you can leave that, if that bugs you, that bulk, you could trim that down a bit to a quarter inch. I wouldn't trim it much less than that, however. Okay, so you saw how that's done. And I'll just do this real time and we'll just speed up the camera on this.
Okay, and now we'll turn our bag right side out. It's starting to look like a bag. This goes together so fast. Isn't that cool how box corners do that? And it helps the bag kind of sit up. You know, so when you have it here, it kind of has shape. Isn't that cool? So already it's able to kind of stand up on its own. So of course we have a raw edge and we need to finish that. So what does our pattern tell us to do? On the binding, sew binding strips together. Now there's two strips that you have for the binding. And because of the binding technique that I'm gonna teach you, I'm gonna actually use both strips. We measure the distance and technically only one is required. But with the technique that I'm showing you, the two that they recommend in the pattern, we went ahead and used the two and we actually need that. So we have two, two and a half strips and we've joined them into one long strip and per the instructions, we folded those in half with the wrong sides together. Of course, the salvages is removed. You want to put the raw edge of your binding, of course, with the raw edge. And I'll just leave a nice big tail. I probably want my joint to be, you know, really anywhere. It, it's going to be so seamless and look so cool. It can be anywhere. I'll just start sewing right in here, leaving a nice big tail. I'll sew this with a quarter inch seam allowance. Let's reinforce that real quick. So in those corners, or in those kind of sides, make sure that that seam you pressed open doesn't roll over. You want it to lay nice and flat. Now when I come around to the side that has the binding where I started, I'm going to stop leaving a very large gap. And I'll show you why right now. Let's get our iron going. Now this is a really cool way to finish this particular binding. So I'll lay my binding strip down. I have obviously plenty of binding. I might trim some of this away. Because it's so, and just put that away for maybe another project. I'll lay this down and fold it back on itself. Same with this one, laying it down folding it back so that those two turns touch but not overlap. There's no gap. They just butt right up next to each other. And press, press, press. Don't be afraid to use steam. You're okay now to iron your project, by the way. Once really everything is stitched down to the batting, you can, st you can go ahead right at that time and actually iron. It's just during the piecing going, to, uh, you know, each piece as they laid down one layer after the other, they didn't want us to be pressing. All right, so now we have a nice, strong, see this fold right here? I'm actually going to press that so the, it's all going the same direction. And this one, See that fold right there? I'm going to fold it again. So it too, because right now I have one fold here and the other fold is down there because it was folded over. I, I really like it when it's easier for me to see it when it's just kind of one, it's all up on top, not half of it up above and half of it down below. Okay. Those two folds come on top of each other, one like this, and one like this. And if this is too tight, see, I should have left more room. I'm going to seam route, rip out just a couple of stitches. I should have left a little more of a gap because the way this, I just need more space. Typically, the rule of thumb, whenever you're joining binding, whether it's a butt joint, or whether it's a bias joint, which I've done on other projects, 
In fact, on another pro project I recently did, uh, it was another June Taylor project, we, we joined um, on the 45 because it wasn't a stripe. Now that's the only reason I'm not doing this on a 45 is because this is a stripe and it's, it looks a lot better on joining strips on binding when it's what's called a butt joint. So I'm just gonna make a little more of a gap that doesn't change anything that we just did, right? We pressed that, we pressed that. They meet. So there are my two folds. I want those two folds to be back to back. So if I kind of kind of fold my project up, it gives me, it relaxes that just a little bit that I can stack my fold right here on top of that fold right there. There's the fold and there's the fold. And let's pin really well. We don't want that moving as we go to the sewing machine. Let's make sure I've got my two folds. You can see why having a really strong crease is important because it's easy to lose the fold in the stripes. You can feel it. Here's the good news. If we make a mistake and we miss that spot, we're just gonna seam rip and do it again. Now we'll just do a straight stitch. Okay, let's see how we did. I definitely don't cut anything until I'm like, okay, did that work? Yes, that worked really well. So now that I know that that was successful, what I like to do is just give a little bit of a press. You know, I wanna reinforce that. See how that's starting to come loose? I should have backstitched right there. I'm gonna go ahead and do that right now. Just don't want that coming apart at that spot. In fact, I'll just sew over that one more time just because, just to reinforce it. Okay, never hurts to do that. So I'll just cut a quarter inch seam allowance Make sure you're cutting on the right side so you're not cutting your binding. And then we'll just press that open. I've got thread all over me today. I must be a quilter, crafter, maker. These, in the old days, in the day, they used to call us crafty. Now they call us makers. Apparently that's the new thing. All right, fold that in half. Press. Isn't that nice? Isn't that just a cool finish? And of course now we'll go continue sewing that to the top of the bag. Just gonna press that one more time. Let's keep sewing that. This can go in your stash. You never know when you want some pretty binding for a really small project, maybe a mug rug or something just tiny. Okay, so our binding is on now. And just like you would bind a quilt if you're a quilter, the next thing to do is to roll that to the inside. I can see now on camera that, remember how the I mentioned you could base that down that once you had everything down to the batting? Um, that you could use either an eighth inch or a, qu a quarter inch seam allowance as they mentioned in the pattern. But 
I realize now, because I see just a little bit of the stitching here and there, that you probably want to use something less than a quarter inch seam allowance, because while we did use a half inch on the sides, on this part, it was a, uh, it was, it's a regular quarter inch seam allowance. So you might see a stitch or two that you might want to take out, since that's just a basting stitch. So the point of what I'm mentioning is, I would go ahead and base those things down to the batting once you have all the pieces down with an eighth inch stitch. I would not be going with that quarter inch stitch. Let's grab some of the Wonder Clips here. Now the part that will be running along the foot of our, the, excuse me, the table, we want it is, is of course the inside of the bag. So make sure the clear side, the flat side, is on that. And you're going to Wonder Clip this all the way around. I'll just show you here. I'll just kind of get this going, and I'll do this off camera just to save time. In fact, I might even put that aside for now so I can just show you the straps. That way I can go off camera and sew this down and do the strap, but I want to definitely show that. So you get the idea. You would just uh, wonder clip that, take that back to the machine. Now that I do recommend you change thread. You might want to change to a pretty gold, something that is not white, because you're going to be stitching in the ditch. And we have a really beautiful gold here. Um, so you might want to be changing that thread, stitching in the ditch to go ahead and catch that binding. So let's put that aside for now, because that's a, that is a step that we'll do. But let's move on to the strap. I've got one done, but I want to show you how this goes together, because it can be one of the more confusing parts, but it's a really cool way that they did that. Let me bring that out and show you what this looks like. We have one prepared. It's really cool too how we did this. So I'm going to move this away so you see what's happening. So you have in your kit you have batting strips. That is, that is what the red is wrapped around and then you have kind of a cording. So let me show you those both. And we found some really cool tools that helped us out with this a lot. So remember with the handles, unlike the main bag where you added a half inch or a one inch and you kind of cut around the perimeter initially, here I cut directly on the lines. Step one that they have us do, strap construction. Cut batting strips on printed lines, right? We did that. Fold short end of two and a half inch fabric strips a half inch. Well, I don't know a half inch visually. So this is where I like to use my Clover Hot Ruler. So I'm going to move that aside for, the, for now. And this is what the Hot Ruler looks like. So I have a quarter inch, half inch, three quarter, one, all the way up to two and a half. So all I need to do is lay this down. I, I line up my bottom edge so I'm perpendicular, and I I'm a little bit over, so I just scoop my ruler until when I fold my fabric over, it reaches my half inch line. I love the precision of that, because in the past, I just kind of winged it, and you know, there's cool tools out there. I could not possibly do this with a plastic ruler, because it would melt. So I'll go and do the same at the other end. That is the very first part of making these handles. So again, I line this up just so I know that I'm square and I'm not kind of cattywampus. And then I kind of scoot it over to when I fold my fabric, it goes right along that half inch measurement and I press. Okay, what's next? Fold short ends of two and a half inch fabric strips, half inch wrong sides together and press. Center each batting piece on wrong side of a fabric strip. When I first did this, I thought, okay, I must have cut something wrong because it's not the same length, but it's not supposed to be. So let me move this out of the way so you can see what I'm doing. I'll just, I'll just move this over here for the moment together. Sometimes working in limited space is challenging, <laughs> but I want you to see what I'm doing so that when you Get your kit, you know what you're doing, and you're just having a good time and not wondering, how did she do that? 
So as you lay your binding strip down, I'm just visually trying to have the same distance above and below the batting strip, and I just kind of tuck that underneath there. So I just kind of visually kind of scoot that. And then I fold that and I press that. And that's what I've done here, is went ahead and folded that in half and pressed. So that's something that I'll do off camera, but I just wanted to show you what that looks like. Is just nothing fancy about that. Okay, we'll do that part off camera. The next part involves kind of this, it's kind of like a strapping. I think I called it a cording, but it's like, let's see what they do call that. Facing spray, okay. Strap webbing is what they're calling it. Include in the package, cut each piece of strap webbing, include in the package the 30 inches. So let's see what we've done here. I believe we've cut that to 30 inches ahead of time. Yes, we have. And, but the yellow strip, which is what's going to be wrapping around that, is cut much longer. And you'll see why here shortly. So we'll bring that out. And again, you're going to fold those under by a half of an inch. And I do need to do that step because the next step requires that's done. So I'll just quickly do that. You know what I'm going to do. You've seen me already use this hot ruler. Okay. Now, this one's going to be a little bit different in that, remember with the red, how it fit kind of tucked under those ends, just like this? It, it was about the exact length. This is going to be different. This piece is going to be short of that, and I, again, I thought, what did I do wrong? This is normal. Make sure that the distance from the end the distance from when that strapping ends to the end is about the same. If you want to get really specific, you can grab those smaller rulers. I don't think that that's necessary to do that. Um, heck, you could even use your hot ruler to measure that if you wanted to. That looks like it's just under an inch, and that looks like that is also just about an inch. And I feel confident that's a really good spot. Now, in her pattern, she gives you a couple options. She says, um, cut each piece of strap webbing to 30 inches. We've done that. We fold our two edges under a half inch. Wrong sides together and press. Center each piece of webbing on wrong side of a fabric strip, pinned in place to hold. Here's what happened when I started pinning. My patchwork pins started bending all over the place, and I was starting to grab for other pins. I didn't want them to bend. The whole idea is that this thing kind of doesn't move. For that reason, she mentions pin in place to hold. Basting spray may also be used to secure the webbing to the fabric because you don't want this thing to shift in here. We found another product that is so cool. We've had it for a while. It started off with the Collins Wonder Tape. We have a limited amount of this left, but Dritz also has the wash away tape and it's from our estimation, nearly the same product. Now that's a wash away product. There's yet another brand, it's the Bowen. And this is a permanent adhesive. So this depends on your preference. They all do the same thing. The Wonder Tapes, whether it's the Collins or the Dritz, are wash away. This is not a wash away product. So decide what you like and pick your favorite if you would like this product. Here's what we did. This is kind of a double-sided tape. Not kind of, it is. And we've laid that along the edge. Just kind of work that into its spot and we trimmed and did it again on the other side. This was kind of our solution for how do we hold all this together while we assemble our straps. We don't want anything shifting. So this is just an option, absolutely not required in any way, shape or form. You could pin you could do the basting spray, or you could do the tape. 
There we go. Once you get it going, it'll come off. And we'll just readjust our, our webbing. I think you just kind of have to get it going. Maybe even grab, get a pin in that corner. Maybe that'll help. Here it comes. I see it's coming up. There we go. Sticky. But we want sticky, right? Okay, that's trash. Let's line that up again. Equidistant. Boy, it wants to stick to me. I'm going to trim off that little piece that's bugging me. Okay. Probably bugging you too watching me wrestle with that. Now fold that edge up. I'm just going to fold this edge up all the way down. And you're going to want to get, if you do use the Wonder Tape or the Bowen, you're going to want to get that tape very close to the edge of your webbing so that you have sticky right along that edge so that when you lay the other edge over, it has something to stick to. We'll continue all the way down, 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 down. Make sure that's still folded down, that one to come up. And now I'm going to take this over here and press. So let's, let's move these items out of the way. This is kind of just to hold things down while we go to the next step. but I'm still going to press everything real well so it's good and flat all the way down. So you can see I'm just going to continue pressing till everything is nice and smooth and straight. So I'll put that aside. Once you've done that, let me show you what this looks like. This is this, like I'm just doing, and you'll lay the raw edges to the raw edges just like that. Now, you want these two ends to be one stacked on top of the other. If you find this is slightly longer, for example, just shorten up your, or make, increase your seam allowance on each end. You want to just adjust them so that they're stacked one on top of the other, and that is lying right in the middle. And as you can see, I wonder clip that. At that point, we go to the sewing machine. I'll be definitely changing my thread to be a gold on the top and a red on the bottom, and just sewing along this edge. You can leave those wonder clips. Let me just show you. I would definitely change my foot. You will see a different foot when I come back um, on that. But I don't need to move the wonder clips as I'm going along because they're far enough away from my presser foot that I can leave them in there. So I pinned on the side so that they could, on this side, so they could stay in there. So when I come back, I'm going to have this completely stitched down. This is all done. Our binding will be done. And we'll come back. I'm going to show you how to put those straps onto the bag. Uh, while I was off camera, I went and sewed one strap on so that I can sew one on with you. I wanted you to see what that's going to look like, noticing that there's no twist in that. So we've got the binding down, and we've got the strap made, and you can see that we just sewed with the gold thread on the top, red thread on the bottom. Now the next step in the pattern, we always like to show you this because they don't get real specific in the instructions of how to put these on. So this is just our approach to how we went ahead and put the straps on. So just like we're seeing on this side, 
now that strapping, let me go into that strapping. Remember how when I had the strapping on the table, it didn't extend. It was almost like just short of an inch, just short of an inch from the end. That's significant because we want to feel where that is. And remember we said that was just short of an inch. So I would call that in this case a scant inch. So I can feel that, but I'm going to go ahead and measure down just shy of that and mark with my friction pen. I don't really even need that to be on the bag while I'm marking it. I'll just go a little bit shy of it. And the main thing is right there, I can feel that strapping. I don't want to sew across that strapping. So when I put that on there and I sew across this, I am just above that strapping because I'm going to stitch that down and then we're going to fold that back and that's going to be our handle. As you can imagine, that strapping is so thick, we do not want to go across that and fold back on top of that. It's way, way, way too thick. So wherever you feel, if your strapping is a little bit higher than that, then adjust accordingly so that you're not going to be stitching across that. All right, so we, you get what I'm going with that. Don't stitch across that strapping. And when you bring this around, you want to make sure you don't get any twists in it. And again, I'm going to feel where my strapping is. I know we did our kind of our scant inch. Uh, the main thing is it's even. And I'm going to draw a line all the way across. Okay, center that in between our stripe, our strip, which happens to be a stripe, I guess I would say. And the same over here. Now, if you've got beefier pins, I would use those. These patchwork pins are really not meant for going through this much bulk. Of course, I don't really need to go all the way through. I'm just trying to attach this to that kind of piece underneath, but I don't want to bend my very precious pins. So like I said, if you've got beefier pins, go grab them. Now you'll want to reinforce. So I'm going to go forward and back a couple times because as in any bag, that's where the bulk of the stress of a bag is, is in that, especially if you're carrying around groceries, heavy things. Sometimes I'll even go over that twice just because I don't want that coming down. I don't want that coming off. I think I went a little beyond there. I got a little excited. Make sure you don't really go beyond that. You don't want to have th kind of thread showing. Now let's repeat that over here on this side as well. Let's see if I can not, not go beyond that. I'm just going to go across it twice because I am going to use this bag and I don't want it coming apart. Now, while we're kind of at the machine, we don't really need to go anywhere. We're just going to bring that strap back over the top. It's, a, it's very bulky here now. We'll stitch here and at the base. So let's just do that. I would definitely start up on top. Again, back stitching. And again, we'll scoot down to the bottom. We just kind of want to reinforce and it's kind of, it's really pretty to have kind of the double stitching there, both at the top and the bottom. And 
and there you are. There is that handle. Of course, we're just going to repeat that for the other handle, but you don't need to see me do that. There's our bag. Isn't that beautiful? Oh my gosh. And I can just envision it in these beautiful warm tones. Maybe in the summer, something bright and fun, flowery, and so on. Just geometric, big, you know, bursts of color for summertime fun at the beach. So I know it's been a longer video. I always appreciate you hanging in there with me and watching. Be sure to leave a comment. If you've made some other June Taylor projects or are really enjoying, the, enjoying that, jump into the conversation. Leave us a comment. Let us know what you've made. And I'll see you on the next Shabby Fabrics video.